Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Love During Lockup, Season 6, Episode 28. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. Ayana and Jamal. Now, she's still in there refusing to see the error of her ways, hoping and hollering in this dang on restroom. Girl, it's not going to change a thing. So then her friend Lexi shows up. Lex, girl, where you been? Honey, you should have came a little earlier to help with that oatmeal for that baby. That's why she messed up now. So she's trying to make sure that she's there for the visit with that man. And as I was watching this, I was just like, her priorities are all messed up. She needs to be locked up just for that. You know what? At first I was thinking four years is a little excessive. No, she should have gotten the book thrown at her because Ayana is irresponsible, doesn't take accountability and it's just downright trifling okay i was trying to fin i was finna try to give her a bunch of fancy words it's giving trifling so she's going to see this man so then she took the kids and dropped them off at this other man's house it said uncle jay or something like that now i don't know if that was her brother or what but i don't care who it is i'm not leaving my babies with nobody but maybe that's just me the only person i trust with my kids is my mama Ayana gives me drop the kids off with a person she just met drop the kids off with one of her friends that she used to work with drop the friends like just drop the kids off with whoever so she's in the car and she's telling her friend that she has to turn herself in tomorrow at 11 a.m she don't even care about that just her being late for this jail visit because she had to do her sentencing now mind you she had a visit scheduled at the same time as her going to do her sentencing on zoom so instead of her being concerned about her well-being and her kids, she's worried about being late to see Jamal. How you boy crazy at this big grown age? Girl, ooh, what? So while they're in the car, he called her. So her, baby, her friend better than me. Because I'm not about to be traipsing you up and down the damn street. You screaming out directives. Go, move faster. Don't stop right there. Girl, please, I wish I would. When you need to be spending this final time with your kids before you're away for 15 days child Lexi is a good one Candace and Andrew so they're on their way to take her to the halfway house and she's going to a place that she doesn't want to be okay she's ready to get to that apartment she'd rather go there instead of going to this place because it's not like a place that she's gone before she said there are mental health issues with certain patients that are on one side and then people that just got out of jail on the other side so he drops her off there and he waits she goes in and comes out and they tell her that she can stay at her apartment as long as she texts them every day and she signs up for EBT. Okay, and in case you don't know what EBT is, baby, that's your Eat Better Today card. I wish I could get an EBT. Y'all think they give me one? <laughs> baby, I want an EBT. Child, I try to pretend like I'm okay, but deep down, I need an EBT. Moving forward. She's nervous because you know, the parole and the probation are telling her that she needs to stay there, but they're telling her something different. And I was just like, are you sure they told you that? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't trust nothing about Candace. Candace don't do nothing but lie. So to me, I was just looking at her like, girl, why you come out huffing and puffing about them saying that you're allowed to go to the apartment that you wanted to go to? Like, girl, get in the car, smoke that cigarette and hush. So they get back to the apartment, right? So she can shower and change and deprive Andrew of everything he thought he was going to get. So he had it all decked out, baby. When she got there, she was like, oh my gosh, this is nice. It don't smell like roaches or nothing. <laughs> baby, she liked it. And I was thinking, ooh, baby, she can treat it better than I was in a marriage. Do I need to go to jail? And I know I ask y'all this every single time. But if I go in, I ain't going to be able to give y'all no reviews. But do I need to go to jail to get the soft life? Baby, I know they say hard wig, soft life, but I just can't see myself doing the hard wig. Baby, it's just something about that crunchy wig that I just, I'm not going to be able to do it. If it stands at attention, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I can't do the hard wig, soft life. But baby, the women getting out of the prison, they are getting treated like queens. Candace already making up these excuses talking about let's just take things slow giving him the rules you sleep here and I'm gonna sleep there Candace is using poor Andrew 
I feel bad for how naive he is. Moving forward, Michael and Joey. So he's telling us that his mom went to the hospital with a brain aneurysm that turned into a stroke and they brought everybody in to say their final goodbyes. When I tell you my mouth was wide open, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, Joey. I really am. I cannot imagine what he's feeling. As much as my mama get on my nerves, baby, that would just shake me to my core. Do you hear me? Now, while he's dealing with this, he's kind of been MIA. Now, Michael and his feelings, because he can't reach him. Sir, now is not the time to be worried about you. There are real life events happening on the outside. Ain't nobody got time to be sitting up on the phone talking freaky deep to you. His mom is going through something and can potentially not be here tomorrow. Because when it comes to my family, I'm no good if things are not right. Child, y'all won't be getting no reviews, nothing. Y'all be looking for me in the daytime with a flashlight. Like, whatever happened to Misha? She just stopped posting. Yeah, I'm going through something. And some people, they, you know, go into their shell when they're dealing with something. And right now, he's probably realizing that he was wasting precious time. Nobody knows the minute, the day, or the hour. Ain't nobody got time to be wasting with you and you lying about when you gonna get out. So Joey stopped by his friend's house, right? And now he's rethinking the whole relationship because Michael is not even accessible. Like he's in prison and he can't really be there for him. Like there's nothing that you can do to help. Right now, I just think it's best that Joey focuses on himself because for me, Michael is too much of a liability at this time. And with all of this stress, I don't want Joey to relapse. And then he's dealing with what's going on with his parents. And like he said, just when he thought he was about to move out, then this happens with his mom. So I just think right now is just not the best time. Shantae and False, honey, formerly known as True. So she's going to visit False's mama with her niece, right? And she wants to get to know her before he gets out. So it won't be drama at his release. So they get on the road and they're in the car and they're talking. And she's telling us that him and his mom just started talking about six months ago. So the mama was a character witness and told people to testify against false because if he didn't go to jail, he was not going to change. I'm sorry, prison, because there is a difference. And I was just like, okay, so she gave him tough love. Listen, now I don't know if I could personally do it, but sometimes people have to hit rock bottom before they change. And she knows her son. She knows that he was going to get out, do the exact same thing to somebody else. So it was best for him to go in and get rehabilitated. So True calls, you know, before Shantae gets there while she's on the road. And he's asking her if she's ready to meet her mother-in-law and her sister-in-law. Sir, quit playing in Shantae's face. You are not about to marry this woman. And if you do, it's only so you can get half of everything. I guarantee you, you're going to want to be on all types of policies and leases and everything else Shantae leave that man alone he is a liar okay and he is not about to marry you talking about some mother-in-law and sister-in-law boy please boy gone she's like I'm really not excited to meet your sister especially after what you told me about her girl go formulate your own opinion of his sister because them baby, baby them people in jail be telling you anything anything they think you want to hear so for me I think it's best that she forms her own opinion about his sister because his sister could be sweet as pie. You know, false baby is a liar. You see them pictures came back to you. Slick Rick and Samantha. So he's telling us that he and Sam have a standing 630 date via the phone. And he wants to sing her a song and tell her that he wants to get married. Meet me at the altar in your white dress. <laughs> Slick Rick. Mm, mm, mm. Child, this is a mess so it's been an hour right Sam is nowhere to be found at 736 because he says she's normally not late at 736 she calls and tells him that she didn't want to talk to him because she was still mad at him and she didn't want to fuzz and he's like well I, I, I wrote you a song this song Slick Rick is singing I want to marry you Samantha Some days I love you Samantha Honey I don't know what he was singing child Anywho he sung her a little ditty <laughs> I said what is this child This song is a mess Is this what had the girls going crazy in high school He was walking around with that guitar Singing to all the girls 
Samantha said, oh, so that's nice. That's nice. Girl, that's all you got? Now, you were fussing that he didn't want to come down to Idaho, but now that he's singing you a song and telling you that he wants to marry you, now you're saying, oh, that's nice? So then he tells her, listen, I'm going to come to Idaho and I want to marry you. I'm going to make things happen. You know, it's going to be a little bit expensive, but I'm still going to come down there. And as he was speaking, I hopped on the Googler and I'm like, how much are tickets to Idaho? Because, baby, he is acting like the tickets are $1,000, honey. Well, how much are they? Child, they were $149 coming from wherever he coming from. I don't know what the fixed income is, so I ain't going to speak on his finances because the ex-wife got the whole other side of the check. But, baby, $149, that is a mess. Child, what's your cash app, Rick? Let me send you some. <laughs> Let me send you some, honey. Mm-mm-mm. I really feel so bad for him because I don't feel like Samantha is sincere. Like he was crying and tearing up and professing his love. And she's just like, okay, see you then. I mean, all she's worried about are them damn lotions and that coffee. This is ridiculous. Candace and Andrew. So it's the next morning, right? She's getting ready for the day. Flat ironing that hair. Putting on a little bit of makeup and a little bit of rouge. She ain't even up good yet. And she's telling him that she hopes he's not disappointed that they didn't have sex last night. But being near him kind of brings up bad feelings. And she's telling him that she wants to focus on getting her son back in her life. And I was just like, okay, Candace. I mean, we have heard this song and dance from everybody that's been on this show. Candace wants a sugar daddy with no sugar. Give her the money, but don't come around here expecting no kisses or nothing else. Now, I know it's going to take her a while to get acclimated to the free world, but where was all of that before he purchased all these things? She's like, yeah, and I know he really wants to take care of me. Yeah, but you said you had no plans on letting him take care of you. So she's telling him, you know, what's most important is her getting her son and she needs that relationship restored before she can be 100% with him. So basically, do not think that we're in a relationship because we ain't. And I need to go find my son who probably ain't thinking about me. And yeah, when I get all of that taken care of, which could take years, then maybe I'll entertain you. But in the meantime, please pay this rent. Please pay this car note. And please go get me some fried chicken. Because that's what she said she wanted last night, y'all. And I just think this is sad because I feel for her not being with her son. Like I can't begin to fathom being gone from my son. Okay, but... I feel bad for Andrew too because he's done all of that for her and she's pumping the brakes. That's not fair to him. Like, girl, you knew all of this before you got out. You knew you wanted to go and find your son and be in it. Why did you accept that ring? And all of a sudden, you know, you sleep head to foot. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. Just get me food. Just do this. And I'm going to go find my son and hurry up because you need to drive me to my next appointment. Like, girl, anyway, moving forward. Shantae and Falls so she finally arrived to meet his people so the niece is sitting over there at the restaurant bar top Shantae and his mama kind of favor a little bit I said not him looking not her looking like his mama <laughs> I don't know if it was just me but Shantae looked like that mama a little bit to me so Shantae starts asking her if she's happy about his release and she was like girl that's your problem now they've been talking for two and a half years and his mom wants to know why she hasn't seen him yet like, why haven't you gone to see him? And Shantae said, it's a very personal reason why she hasn't gone. And I wonder what it is. I was very curious as to why she hasn't been to visit him. Because if you're saying you want to marry this man and you're taking out a $100,000 loan for a restaurant, don't you think you might want to see him in person first? Because maybe you might be wasting your time, which we all know you are, but honey, here we are. So then his sister showed up. Hey, girl. And Shantae was saying that, you know, false was her baby. And his sister said, okay, how is he your baby? And y'all ain't never seen each other. His sister said, look, I know that he will not like Shantae based on his type. And based on those pictures that they were showing, I don't think he gonna like her either. And I feel for Shantae because she is truly lost. This man is using her. And as soon as he gets out, he gonna do her bad. I hate to say it, but he gonna dog her out. And he really ain't got no room to be dogging nobody out the way that hairline of his is sitting in the back of his head. Honey, I know you got like a little, you know, fade at the top and a few locks at the back. But, babe, we're going to have to decide on one or the other. 
Are we going to just shave it all off? Or are we going to do like, I don't know. They got the man wigs now, child. You need to do something with that. <laughs> that is a fool. So Shantae is telling them that the plan is for him to parole to her house. And the mom was like, oh, that's news to me. But I mean, I guess he can stay with you. So as she's telling them that he called and his mom said, well, look, we heard that you were going to stay at Shantae's house, but I was getting that room together for you. So now he want to try and backpedal. He wants to make sure that he has somewhere else to go just in case. And even his mom said he's telling us two different things. And listen, if he's telling his mama and Shantae two different things, I already know that he's telling somebody else on the outside that when he gets out, he going to be with them. I know he is. So then his sister was asking him, like, why did you propose to Shantae? He going to say, I can't answer that. I'll answer it because she's naive and gullible. That's why. And because you and that stepbrother running a play and you about to empty her pockets. That's why. And because that stepbrother already filled you in on how lonely and vulnerable and insecure Shantae is. And she's an easy target. And you being the loser that you are, you and that sorry stepbrother of hers who stole that money and probably put it on your books. Because don't think I forgot what you said about that stepbrother in the first episode. I'm not going to let that go. Y'all are running a play and y'all ain't fooling me. So when y'all find out, come back to this very review and say, Misha told us. Cause it's just something about that stepbrother and him I just do not trust. Moving forward. I would have drove right on back home, honey. You ain't about to make a fool out of me. Slick Rick and Sam. Child Rick done made <laughs> this scene right here. Listen, Slick Rick, you and Ricardo need y'all on show. So Rick did not want to rent a car because he said it was expensive, but he had an Uber driver that he made friends with child rick done made friends with the black ricky ricardo so you know his name is rick and the man's name is ricky is, is ricardo so i put them together honey the black ricky ricardo he was his uber driver and he's driving him to idaho baby pretty ricky what they call <laughs> he wearing a faux fur and all do you hear me ricky drove him past the pawn shop to get a ring for samantha see rick is smart start low and aim high rick you need to talk to andrew because andrew don't know how to do it he going straight for the dha dh gate bags what he should be doing is taking her to the flea market and letting her get something taking her down to the ross you don't buy her no fooey bag and act like it's a real one because then she gonna think you got money like that and you can barely afford to pay your car note anywho so he down to the pawn shop and he picks out this ring and i was just like rick what is this ugly ring you done bought it looks like a man ring i know she can't have much while she's wherever it is that she is but the ring was just ugly child they done stopped by the vitamin shop and samantha want all these good vitamins honey she wants d3 collagen b12 and the man was like that he was with the black ricky ricardo he's like why does she need so many vitamins i think she's selling them listen uh ricardo sam cares about her health i take a lot of those vitamins myself speaking of i need to re-up on some d3 let me tell y'all something make sure you take your d3 and your magnesium glycinate at night baby best sleep that you will ever get then make sure that you get your b12 in the daytime so that you'll feel energized and also i just started taking some l-theanine and that's helped like regulate my moods honey because i was like a hairy scary monster honey getting perimenopausal too so i think samantha is doing what needs to be done ricky ricardo and she does look good for her age so i think she's actually taking all of that stuff i don't think that she's selling it ayana and jamal baby this right here is a mess so the visit is over she comes outside with an attitude per usual girl you are always mad girl please so she's telling her for just i just need to chill just pull over just, i just need to chill so she's crying because she's a spoiled brat he calls her she's upset because they got less time than they were supposed to get and they got less time than they do on a video visit girl save those tears for your babies you up there crying because you won't be able to talk to this man for a few weeks you need to sit down so you can reevaluate some things trifling heifer i cannot stand a Debbie at least you got to see him now she's mad that she didn't get to see him the whole three hours girl you had to take care of your own life first grow up 
And friends, you need to stop enabling her. Now she's in the car talking about, he's the only one that could calm me down. And like, I don't know how I'm gonna make it not talking to him for two weeks. Ayana, you're sickening. I was trying so hard not to be so mean to you, but you're sickening. All you're mentioning is that man. You, you don't care nothing about nobody else except that man that you took from that friend. And I don't see how Lexi can be friends with you or even be around Ayana. I could never be her friend because her pigeon behavior would piss me off way too bad. I could never. Every single episode ends with Ayana having a fit. Girl, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. You shouldn't have broken the law. So now here we are. You have to go sit down for 15 days. You probably don't even have your kids in place. We ain't seen your mama since. You're dropping them off to strange people's homes. And all you're worried about is not being able to talk to this man for two weeks. You're not in high school. You're going to be fine. And that was the end of the episode. This season is so good to me. And the reason why I think this season is so good to me is because it doesn't seem pre-produced. It doesn't seem fake. These seem like real storylines. Cause like for a while I had stopped watching this because I felt like, okay, you got Deontay fighting in the ditch. He fighting uh, over here fighting with these two. Like it, it was just giving fake. It was like a sitcom and it was starting to get on my nerves. And I was just like, I don't want to watch this anymore. And I think that's why I fell off with seeking sister wife. And it's so funny that I was looking at it and I was just thinking this has to be fake. Like it just not, doesn't even seem real. Who wants to be around nasty Nick? Lo and behold, I'm on the Googler and I see that there's an article where they're saying that the storylines are fake. And I was just like, I knew it because the way that this is being produced and put out to the masses, nobody that thinks logically and critically would look at that and say, I know this is how it's going down. It's a lie and the truth ain't in it. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.